All right, we are live. Day two. Mm, wisdom day of your two. soul. Day two. And day wise. two. Our souls are wising up. <laughs> yes. And I'm so excited that you guys are joining me for day two for Sophie and I. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If this is your first hangout, we're happy to hear, have you. And um, I want you to know what we're talking about is the wisdom of your soul. It isn't about you being wise or you having to do anything or you, all the magic that you have done so far in this life, you know, the college education, the, the trainings, whatever. Nope, this is, this is the wisdom that comes from the divine. This is the part that comes from your highest soul self the part of you that lives with God. And so I'm going to share with you um, this fun thing from my first book, Believe Angels Don't Lie. And just so you to know, so you know that today's prize is going to be this, you're going to win autographed copies of the Believe Angels Don't Lie books. Um, and all you will have to do is listen and follow us to the end and then follow my little guidance at the end. I'm going to give you the post to add into the Facebook group. For you to win that prize and yesterday we were giving away the goddess you books and so that's still available for you guys all you have to do is post for day one and you can find that text and we'll include it after for you guys and i want to also kind of give like a little bit of a recap from yesterday too, oh perfect because Thank we you. have some some people who were with us yesterday and then we have some people that might not have been able to catch day one but they're here for day two um, so yesterday we covered the principles for aligning with your soul self, which is really um, expanded upon in Jeannie's first book, The Goddess You, 12 Principles for Living in Soul Alignment. And so a lot of what we talked about yesterday to go further with it would be to read The Goddess You and to follow those principles and the journal prompts and live in that soul alignment. Um, we talked about what it's like to live outside of the soul alignment and what that looks like and you know that might feel like leaky energy or flying out of your body having a disassociation feeling um, and then we talked about what, what it is to live in soul alignment and to experience self-love and self-love is really the the founding principle um, behind a lot of this healing work and we talked about what self-love is and what self-love is not and we ended with a core color meditation led by Jeannie. And this is something that she does um, frequently because it's one of the one of the ones that I find to be the best meditation in getting you to really align with your soul self and really coming back into your body and connecting with your divine soul. Um, and then we had a little bit of homework which was to describe <laughs> how it feels when we're not inside of our body and to list the emotions that we feel are triggered the most often. And then the sensations that we feel when we come back into our body. And we made you a printable so you can print it out. Everything is, is located inside the Angels Don't Lie Facebook group. So you can just scroll through there, get the link. So you get both of the, the homework sheets for today and yesterday and the replay links. Yes, yes, yes. Thank Beautiful. you, Sophia. Thank you for yeah. recapping. Absolutely. When she smiles at you, she'll say, angels don't lie, angels don't lie, angels don't lie, no, no, angels don't lie, angels don't lie, no, 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 no. So, what are we going to do today? What are we going to do today, Sophia? What we're going to do today is, um, one, I'm going to share with you what my angels taught me about my soul, about our souls. And this is really the wisdom that came through in this book, um, a heavenly view of what God has in mind for us. And so I wanted to break it down in like little small digestible things for, for everyone so you can understand the rhythm the rhythm of your being and how to know when you're in it and when you're not in it. So we're going to talk about the infinite soul. We're going to talk about the reoccurring patterns in your life. 
things that keep happening, showing up that stay the same. We're going to talk about fluxing energy. So we're going to talk about your emotions and your feelings and that flux that we feel. Like sometimes we feel like we're like feeling really good and happy and excited and joyful. And then other times we're fluxing into a different energy where we might feel like anxious, despair, um, you know, depending on you. And this is all about you. We're going to talk about what you feel. So I really want to tap into those things so we can look at them and we can process them to heal them. Because the reason we flux, the reason we go into this up and down roller coaster kind of energy is we haven't felt all of our feelings and that's due to a lot of different things, but simply put the conditioning, the early conditioning in our lives that shaped our belief system. And then those belief systems that we've taken on and held within, and then those things that turn into opinionation and not necessarily, opinionation is really fun. Um, it's, a, it's a kind of a, a cue in that we're holding energy that really is keeping us stuck and structured. Our opinions are really made up a lot of times from our emotional wounds. So they're not necessarily truth. So that way you have to resource. And this is what I teach in my program is how do we resource the energy to find out if it's real or true, if it's actually divine wisdom, if it's actually source energy, or if it's that fear energy that's keeping us in the same patterning. So we aren't filling up with joy. And why? Why do I want this for you guys? And why do you know, why does God want this view for you? because you're amazing, because you're a beautiful soul, because you are a beautiful being and your energy and your light and your love and your knowledge and everything about you is needed. All of those talents, all of those little quirky things, all of those things that make you you are yummy. And they're, they're meant to be shared and felt by other people, not just held inside and stuffed down and put away. And that's what we tend to do when we have a lot of pain or a lot of angst or a lot of confusion, a lot of inner chatter that brings us to thinking, contemplating, judging outside of ourselves. And it's contagious too. And we start to heal mm. all of our pain points and we start to heal all of our you know, past traumas and we work on ourselves. It's contagious. That spreads. That has a ripple effect. That positive energy and vibration, it ripples. Mm. Yeah. So when you're brave and this is the thing, it takes one little step forward and you don't know the next step until you take that first step. Like sometimes taking a leap of, of action is really scary, especially when there's like something involved that you'll have to do. Well, maybe their homework, I might have to do something and I don't have time. Um, I don't have the resources. I don't have, I don't have a place to go. I don't have money. You know, I, I have too many bills. I just can't do it. So we have these things that keep us kind of perpetually the same. And though they may seem real and they might seem um, concrete, really they're energetic, right? So it is the frequency, it's the fluency of our thought patterns and our beliefs and our and our well-being and our in our energy because we can be we can be going through something really big, such as an illness. And, and I've seen this so many times with different clients and it, from the framework of where they're standing is the energy they're in. So they can be in a place of fear and their energy really is depleted and they're really struggling and they're really trying and they're really um, not in a good place energetically. And so that illness begins to be who they are they become that, they become the trauma, the pain point, the, the suffering, you become the divorce, you become what you are in the energy of. And so if you believe, and if your energy is in love and light, then you move through that thing, that struggle that, that comes at you, because we're all going to have it. We're all going to have it. Nobody's immune to having big experiences in this life, just so you know, it's not a measure of yours is bigger than mine. Your pain is bigger. Your pain is more. It's really, it's like, wait, I see you. I feel you. I get that you have 
these big things, they just don't have to define you. You don't have to wear them on the outside and cloak yourself. But we do because those are our stories. And you ever find yourself, and I see this so many times when people first join Soul Shine or a group event, and they'll start telling their story, right? Because this is what they're used to putting on. Okay, so this is how I grew up, and this is the experience, and and this happened with this happened, and then I had this trauma, and then this happened, and yeah, I'm just I'm a mess. And so they've stated it. They've they've stated who they are right there energetically. But that's not who their soul is. That's not who their soul is. And so the beautiful thing is like you start un- uncovering that and you start seeing the beautiful, the beautiful flower of who they really are. You start seeing the semblance of the light and love beyond the story frame. And that's what I'm hoping for you guys to do today. And I'm going to give you some things to do. And we're going to have some fun in the chat. And um, we're not going to necessarily do live readings today, just so you know, we're going to save that for tomorrow. We're going to do a live experience tomorrow where we'll interact a little bit more. So today I just wanted to serve you and then tomorrow we'll interact. I hope that sounds good, but we'll interact in the comment section. Um, So I wanted to read, this is from the cover, the inside cover of Believe Angels Don't Lie. I just wanted to read it to you because this is always how I would... um, open my group events because um, for a long time, what I found is people were very confused between who they were, who they were identifying with. Um, And so they were identifying, like I said, with their pain and, and it's not, this hasn't changed. This is still the same. And so I wanted to open today kind of with this. Okay. Um, So the angels taught me two universal truths. And when I started doing this work, and the first truth is that our souls are infinite, meaning we are here on the earthly plane and we are with God. We are experienced, I'm sorry, we are expansive beings. We can connect to our soul self and live a joyful life. Since we are all infinite, our departed loved ones are therefore always with us, just without physical form. And so the infinite self, meaning your highest soul self, the purity of who you are, right? That part of you that is the grace of God. The part that we don't always see first when we look in the mirror, right? When we wake up in the mirror, what's the first thing that you see? Um, Guaranteed, there's a lot of like inks that happens. Most people look in the mirror and they're like, oh, you know, I look tired. Or there's some form of uh, judgment that enters in the mirror And that's how we set the tone for our day. So today, I want you kind of look at that. Like, how have I set my day today? Like, what was that first thing that you saw when you looked in the mirror? And if you can, just put it in the comment section. So the second universal truth is that we all want to be loved and validated, right? Just across the board. And my experience channeling readings have shown that my clients departed loved ones and their team of angels are in agreement that we are all in need of a love intervention. I love that, right? We are all in, in need of a love intervention. What does that mean, right? We, we don't realize that we are in essence love. We can return to that state of love. Uh, we, can, we can enter that phase by starting to look at the things that are holding us in sameness, the things that are patterning and those are a lot of times what the feelings which we become addicted to, the emotions and the feelings, the emotions we don't want to have. So we ignore them, stuff them down, uh, put them away, place them in a closet. <laughs> um, but then the feelings that are constantly coming and we're trying to uh, communicate them or assign them in our body, we're, we're trying to make sense of all of this stuff. Well, I feel this or I feel that. I don't know how I feel right? So we're holding this and that keeps us in this same energy. And like I said, we'll flux, we'll flux from one energy to another. Um, We can call this bouncing of timelines even because when we have trauma, we will leave our physical being to go into, as we talked a little bit yesterday, into those old paradigms, into those old beliefs. And we'll get stuck. We'll get stuck there and be like, why am I thinking this? Why am I feeling this? Why do I feel low again or depressed again? Or when I was doing so well, um, why has this failed? You know, when I was putting the effort in, well, 
you're leaving you're leaving your physical form in in this here and now and going into the pain because the feelings are coming in of whatever they are for you inadequacy jealousy right we all have insecurity shame guilt so when we identify with those feelings and those emotions we can better understand what our triggers are what are the things that are pushing your buttons that are bringing you to this place of overthinking judging ignoring or not taking that step forward not going into the pattern the forward like oh this is the forward motion this feels good yes this is my next right step and everything starts to be revealed because that's where our faith is it's like uh uh-huh i'm gonna hold faith i have hope everything is happening for the highest and best good but that's not the path i find people walking on and it's not where i was walking honestly either the path that is is complicated like things have to be hard have to figure this out. I have to try really hard. And maybe this will connect with you because I know it has with a lot of clients um, because this is the story that I lived. Like I have to do things on my own. I had a story and a wall built around what I believed was to be true about life. And that's how I walked through most of my life, right? So school was really difficult. School was really hard for me. I I did a lot of um, trying. I did a lot of Uh, ignoring and flying out of my body. I did a lot of trying to fit in people pleasing, a lot of people pleasing. That was a full-time job right there. And what I found was the more I poured my energy into trying to do my schoolwork, studying and figuring it out, like I could never figure out how to take notes or how to do those things just didn't come to me easily. I would try and then it wouldn't, I wouldn't get a good grade. And the more I let go the easier things would be. So here it is, it's, you know, I'm a senior in high school, right? And literally, I'm probably not going to graduate. It's the end of senior year, I'm barely getting by. And they're like, I don't think you're going to, I don't think you're going to graduate. And my mom and my dad, and they're nervous, and they're, they're mad at me, because, you know, I've been skipping school, I, you know, I have pretty much straight D's, (laughs) you know, pretty much like, not good. You know, getting a C was a really big deal. And so I just decided, I made a conscious decision in that last quarter of of my senior year to just let go, let go. And I did this really cool thing where I even stopped wearing makeup. I just only wore um, mascara. I don't even know why, but I was like, I'm just going to be this. This is who I'm going to be, just me. I'm just going to wear mascara and I'm going to let myself see my face. I'm going to let myself be in my body. And I decided to stay in school, not leave, not forge my mom's signature, you know, skip school. I decided to stay and just slowly be in the work. And it paid off because I, I graduated. I went to, you know, my guidance counselor and she's like, you did it. I don't know how you did it, but you did it. And you're graduating. I went home. I told my mom the news. She literally took up her diamond studs and gave them to me and put them in my ear. She's like, she was crying. She was so excited that I did it. And it wasn't that I had tried. It's just, I made a conscious decision to be in the energy of it. And so it was very different for me to experience that. And I've, I've fluxed in and out of that. Like I've make things hard my whole life. And then when I let go and I'm just decide I'm in this because it's meant to be, this is, this is supposed to be, this is what God wants for me. Then it's effortless but it's the trying that always entangled me in, let me see how they're doing it. Let me look over here. Let me, let me try to study this. And then it would take me down, take me in a spiral. Like it would lock me in energy away. And so I found this with my clients as well, that they experience similar, different in their own words, experiences of this. So what I can tell you is it's the conscious decision of letting go. It's the conscious decision that, when we have God and we're in that wisdom, what, will, what we need comes to us because now we become the open vessel. And if you study anything about manifestation, you understand that you're a magnet. You do create your surroundings because what you believe internally, what you have inward is showing up in your world. So if you're in chaos and you're fighting with people and there's, there's anger, guaranteed there's going to be anger on the outside. 
Like if you're angry on the inside, if you have unforgiveness, you're going to see it up in your world. You're going to see someone who's not forgiving you. You're going to see anger. You're going to be, you're going to see separation. It's literally going to happen. Why we want to connect with the wisdom of our soul is to tap into that love, to tap into what does it feel like to let go of that? What does it feel like to be free of that one thing that grips you? Just like when I was in high school, that one thing was graduation was gripping me. But as soon as I let it go in the last I don't even like, you can't even like make it up. I graduated. I, it did it. I, I got a, you know, whatever it was, a C or B, I don't even remember, but I remember it was a good grade for me. And I was like overwhelmed with joy. Like I just did it. It didn't have to do anything, but it happened for me. So God has that great plan for us, for us to move into the next great thing. And by all means, like writing a book, doing you know, creating, creating, I feel consider myself a creator, creating the energy that God puts in me and putting it out, pouring it out in my books, in, in our, in our podcast, in experiences like this, um, sometimes in my artwork, depending in the writings, it's, it's, it comes through me, right? It's not of me. So I don't have to make it happen. And that's what I want for you too. I want you to have that dream, that yumminess, that your postcard vision, I want it to come to a reality. And most people don't understand that postcard vision is very different from like a want. Our wants are usually, are usually fed through our pain points. Our wants are usually out of jealousy or an insecurity. Our wants are not our heart's desires. There's a difference, right? Our wants are leaning into like, oh my God, look at everything she's got. Life is so easy. Our wants are not yummy. They're painful. They're hitting our pain point. They're saying, I don't have enough. So I want that. But the heart's desire, right? Your heart's desire, your postcard vision, which you all have guaranteed. I know this without a fact, it's a fact. Postcard visions are how God gives us a view of what we're meant to be doing in this life. So for instance, the postcard vision, it's a flat, it's a, it looks like a picture, right? Not a movie, totally different. Like the lifetime movies in your head, those aren't reality, but the flat postcard vision, the clear like flip of you being on stage, of you writing a book, of you uh, dancing on stage, or you singing, that, that is truth. Whatever it is for you, your postcard vision, and we're going to do that meditation today so you can connect with it. And you can connect with the wisdom of your soul and get that next right step for you to start co-creating. Co-creating is you were never meant to do it alone. And that's the biggest pain point. That's what I saw with Nicole who came into the program. Um, I love, love, love Nicole. She came into Soul Shine after she took, after she took um, my angel healer training. She's such a beautiful, beautiful healer. And she, she still walked away with a little bit of insecurity, a little bit of uncertainty. And she is shining so brightly now because she has stepped, she's really stepped into the truth of her soul. And she's leaning in in ways of experiencing what does it look like for me to give a reading from letting go and not people pleasing to showing up when it feels really good for her. And it is, it is graceful. It is bright and shiny. It is so much fun to see her come like on board. And that's what it's like when a soul comes on board. It's like they're lit the fuck up. It's lit up. I'm going to swear today because yes. <laughs> right. It's just a little it's so different. true. It's so true. She really has lit up and she continues to light up. Oh yes. Each time we see her in soul shine too, she has a new kind of experience to share with us about her soul's growth and her soul's journey. And our last session where we talked about emitting that peace and freedom from your heart and you guided us through a gorgeous meditation that just allowed that peace to flow. I know that she really connected with that. I know I really connected with that. It was really, really special, but yeah, it's so mm -hmm. cool to watch the growth of everyone post angel healer training, but also within soul shine. It's so exactly. cool. Exactly. And, and so it's fun. I love seeing like soul shine for me is such a yummy 
you know, sacred space to have, you know, people that are either interested in possibly using their gifts, or they don't know what their next step is after the angel healer training. It is that sacred space where we get to go in a little bit deeper and a little bit more intimate. Um, and one of my favorite, favorite, favorite things to do is when I'm leaning in, in this group is God will bring me to like a connected point that they all have going on. Like each one of us will have something very unique and different for ourselves, but it'll tie together and, and everybody will see like, they're not alone in their pain. They're not alone in their suffering or their challenges. But the problem is we identify with the problem so much so that it becomes the life that we are leading. And that's, that's, that's just not fucking okay. For me, it's not okay Absolutely. for you, right? No, nobody should have to live in that suffering. Nobody should have to live in that energy that is choosing to be different, that is choosing to have a conscious decision of there is more for me and I'm worthy. I am the grace of God. God loves me. Everything is happening for me, not against me. So all roads lead to a moment, right? So if you're listening today, you're here today, this is, this is a sign. This is a message for you. I trust always that God puts in front of me the right teachers, the right leaders, the right podcasts, the right books. All of those things happen in divine timing. They just do. And they bring us to our next, our next right step. And sometimes this feels really scary and we're like, no, no, no. But it's the leap of faith. It's the leap. Oh, and I see somebody's asking, I think it's Megan is, and, um, hold on, is it Melissa? Uh, Melissa is saying, um, yes, you definitely can go in, in the Facebook group to listen to the last one. And what's Angel Healer Training? Um, Sophia, can you just put the link in for the Angel Healer Training page? Yeah, and absolutely. what you can do is you can go to that page and you can see all of the levels. So for me, it's the Angel Healer way. We are all healers. Every single one of us has been born with the ability to heal our greatest suffering. And what is our greatest suffering? It's our internal dialogue. <laughs> Honestly, it's the, it's the internal chaos that we have going on. It is not your trauma. It is not your health. It is not your wealth. It is the internal dialogue. That is, that is the one thing that is tripping you up. So what you can do is go over there see the angel healer way different areas there is the angel healer training there's the empath and sensitive soul workshop there is well that's what we're doing yes i'm sorry that's a great question do we need to heal ourselves first so before you step into angel healer training um we can definitely hop on a call with you and we can discuss it send us a dm and we'll we'll hook you up um with a with a quick call to find out like what the angels are showing for you. That's kind of what I love to do. Lean in with people too. Like, where do I see them and where do I feel them? Um, because like, it isn't for everyone. They're not quite there yet. So uh, we can talk about that. That and also healing is not a one-stop thing. It's, you know, not a one it's and not done. like you have, by no means you ever have to be, you know, like this perfectly aligned, gorgeous soul self before coming into a training. I just want to make sure that that said, like, that's not what the training is for. The training is to help you discover, you know, everything about yourself. And so I'm saying that as a person that has attended genies angel healer training you do not have to be you know perfect yogi balanced you know soul self before you come to these trainings she has so many resources for you to work your way up there and um it just amplifies everything that you're already doing and that's one of the reasons honestly i created soul shine sessions which is what what i'm really leading you to today um yesterday and today um I created it because what I saw sometimes happening after Angel Hitler training is attendees wouldn't know what their next right step was. They were really getting stuck and they weren't using their gift. They weren't stepping forward. And God said, you know, there just needs a little bit more time for them to get their shine up, to get cleansed, to heal, to work on the trauma. And so that's where our soul shine. I say that so fast and I get my S's going soul shine sessions. <laughs> are all about is is 
buffing those areas within us that are still sticky, that are still holding on to old patternings that are in pain. And if that includes, you know, receiving messages from departed loved ones, then that's going to happen in those sessions. There's nothing held back. That's what I want to say. Like, I don't hold back. We go exactly where the group needs to go in order to uncover that yick. So we can bring the light in there and the shine can be there. And so that's what it is. And sometimes people, I mean, you have to go off your truth. Like that's what we're going to do today in that meditation is look, your body can't lie. Your body knows truth. But what happens for us is we get so used to not identifying with what is ours. We get, we get addicted to looking to the outside world. Like, where's my sign? Is that a sign? right? What should I do? Let me call her. Let me call this person. Let me. And so we start looking and we start creating more chaos on the outside. I call that the mini tornadoes. Whenever I see somebody that has many tornadoes around them, I know they're creating a lot of their own drama. They're exhausting themselves. They're exhausting their own efforts. And let me tell you, most, most trauma-based people, which we all have stuff. I'm just going to say that out loud. Um, we do. We just have things that separate our energy from our original truth. And we can call that trauma. We can call that pain. We can call it suffering. Call it what you want. But I use trauma because it's just a word I think most people can identify with. That energy starts to stifle the light within. It, it creates a block to the truth of who you really are but I know you, you are dreaming. I know that those desires of your soul are poking at you. And there are things that are coming to you and maybe you're ignoring them or turning away from them, but they are still there. And they've been there since you were little and they haven't gone away, right? They just haven't. And maybe they just need more love. They just need a remembrance of, okay, this is really who I am. And there's something about taking your shoes off and your socks off and going walking in the grass, breathing in the fresh air, leaning on a tree to get back into your childlike energy because that's the purity. That's the purity that where God is going to speak closer to you. Mm. So um, alignment, let's talk about that. Like soul alignment, we touched on it a little bit yesterday. Your soul alignment is unique to you. Like I, I can lean in as a, as a healer, you know, as a medium and you guys, a lot of you are healers and a lot of you are, are intuitives and you're leaning into other people's energy and we can lean in and we can get energy around Sophia and we can try to guide her and lead her. But, you know, the most, pro the biggest problem is we're staying in the earthbound energy number one. That's what I see healers doing. They're leaning in, they're going around earthbound energy and they're coming up with predictive type of guidance, not God guidance, not wisdom. They're leading from their own point of view. And that can be a problem, a huge problem. It can leave somebody in a really um, difficult position because they're trying to understand like, what is meant by that? Like, what am I supposed to do with that? That doesn't feel good. Or it leaves them with like, I went to this one reader one time and she was an angel reader and I knew I was supposed to write the book. It was there. It was with me. And so she asked if I had a question and I said, yes. I said, I keep feeling guided to write a book. And she's like, oh no, no, no. And she just gave me this whole energy. And she's like, I have a book. You should buy my book. And so it was like this whole thing. And it felt so yicky, but I left questioning like, oh my God, like my angels, I did feel this. Now I was second guessing my connection. I was second guessing like, am I getting this right? Did it, maybe I got it wrong. Um, maybe I'm not connecting to angels. Maybe I just started going into that place. And so I had a cleanse. I had to get into a cleanse, but it took me some time to get to that cleanse. Nobody walked me through. There are energy readers that are reading on an earthbound level. I had to tap into spirit. I had to go to heaven in order to hear this. And that made a lot of sense. That started to change how I worked as well. 
It changed how I showed up for my book. It changed how I was showing up in life because I was listening to God and not to people. The wisdom of God will bring you to a different storyline that will be so beautiful and so lovely for yourself. So staying in, that's why it's so important. And it's an inside job. It's not outside. It's not outside. Don't lean to someone to tell you what to do. You need a confirmation? Sure. You want to read it? You want to lean in? Go to a God-based person. Do not just show up desperate because desperation is going to receive desperation. And when, and when you do receive that guidance or you do receive that sign or you receive that nudge or you receive that angelic tone or that spirit's voice, don't dismiss it either. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes we we get that message and then we're so quick to be looking for the next message or to be looking for some way to validate what we just received that we're almost kind of just skipping right over that message. You know, if the message is coming in for you to take your next step or to, you know, attend the next whatever you're supposed to do next. I can't say what it is for you. It's, it's, it's yours. When you get that message, be mindful to stay in that message. Yeah. Let you, it really sink in. Before yeah. You, you hop. To I always say thing. resource it, resource it, resource. You have the tools. Your tool is your physical body. Your tool are your hands, your faith of leaning inward, hands on body, will bring you to your answers, will bring you to that guidance that will remind you, "Mm -hmm, this is good, this is yummy. Your body knows truth. And when you ignore it, it it knows it too. Resource, bring it in, get the truth, ask, and it shall be given. Knock, and the doors will be open. And once you receive, (sighs) receive grateful, thankful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my gosh. You guys are so much fun. All right. Um, hold on. Grace is saying something. She says, when you are in a dark, confusing place, there doesn't seem to be any messages, light or guidance. Yeah. That's the opposing grace. Thank you for saying that when we are in the dark, when we are in the confusion and we are kind of feeling stuck, this is when fear will jump on board and fear will start telling us different stories and leading us down those dark, dreary roads, those lifetime movies. And so that's when we make that conscious decision, like I was telling about, telling you about when I was in high school, and I've done it throughout my life, is you just decide, let go and let God, you decide this, there's an easier way, right? Where do you feel love? How does love show for you? And so sometimes we have to recreate that good feeling. We have to remind ourselves, maybe it's that walk in nature. It's a hot bath. What is it for you? Add it in the chat right now. I want to know what is it for you? What's the goodness? Um, Kathleen is saying, how is my eye doing? I had surgery 12 days ago. Thank you for asking. Um, Kathleen, we're going to be doing readings. I'll do more tap-ins tomorrow. We're just kind of showing up today to guide you through a few things around connecting with your, the wisdom of your soul. So that's what we're going to do today. Beautiful. There was one little piece that I wanted to add to Grace's um, statement too, about being in a dark place. Mm. I think when you're in a dark place, sometimes it can be very, very hard um, to move your body, right? To even, even move Mm -hmm. your body can sometimes feel like you just can't make that brain body connection. Um, And so when you're in that dark place, I feel like the word, the word stillness comes to me just stillness, you know, finding that moment to be still and doing it outside is sometimes I think the best, but finding that moment of stillness, because when you're in darkness, sometimes that can become your story, which you're talking about, right, Jeannie? It can become the story that we start telling ourselves, I'm in darkness, Mm -hmm. I'm in darkness, I'm not receiving guidance, I'm not receiving light, I'm not receiving messages because I'm in darkness. And that so that story, story, that story is what's going to keep you perpetually the same. And so it's identifying. And I love that Grace kind of said that. And you went there because I was telling you earlier, I wanted you guys to identify with a feeling or emotion that 
seems to trigger you, seems to come up all the time. And that kind of can be that space of, oh, I feel stuck. Oh, I can't get out. So what is it for you? Like identify with that now. And if you can put that in the chat, that would be really great. Um, I can tell you one for me, I think because we're so human, you know, we're not above, you know, no matter where you are in life, you're never going to be above anyone, right? We're, we're human and we're, we're, we have things that we're going to heal and we're going to just be working through them. So for me, I can definitely get sticky around when I start to feel a little insecure, when I start to feel other people pulling away because energetically I feel responsible. I feel like there's something wrong with me. I hurt them. I must have done something wrong. And so that's an old storyline. And it'll come in every now and then and kind of poke. And I have to do that work to realize I'm not alone. I'm not, I didn't do anything. It's not about me. Their energy is, is they get to do them. Um, but it's an old pattern that can, I can obsess about, right? So that's, I'm sharing there. Sophia, can you share one of yours? Yeah. Um, so like one of my darkness patterns, you're saying? Like, like something, my- yeah, something that triggers, that pops, that pokes you. Yeah. Um, so I have a story of not being worthy. That was a story that I started to tell myself when I was a little kid. And then that story was perpetuated by just circumstances throughout high school, circumstances throughout my adolescent life that just kept saying, um, you're not worthy. And that's what little Schmigo guy would tell me is that you're not worthy. Um, and that kind of had a web effect where it went into you're not worthy of love you're not worthy of praise Mm -hmm. you're not worthy of receiving divine love um yeah melissa you share that with me too unworthiness like we're we're, we don't we're not worthy um so that was the storyline that i would tell myself and then that storyline is like this little pocket and all of a sudden there'd be like these ant holes where something up here would happen and it would just trickle right down into that pocket and so talk about being triggered talk about you know my trauma point my my story point that story just kept getting fed because I was feeding it yes we have to cut that off I almost like imagine Shmigo now as a dude who comes into the room and I'm like you're evicted I I'm evicting you right now because I can see when that storyline, Melissa, when I, when grace, when your storyline enters the room, the healing work allows you to know when he's come into the room. It allows you to know when your story has entered the chapter or when your story is showing up. So if your story is I'm unworthy, if your story is I'm not loved, if your story is, um, I am in darkness. I am depressed. I am grieving. Those are all really true emotions and places, but we can make the choice not to live there. And it's these little tools that start to bring you out. And it's not going to be immediate necessarily at first, right? You're not going to immediately be like, whoa, I feel so great. And I'm going to feel great for the rest of the week. It doesn't always happen like that. Sometimes it might if you do the right things, but it doesn't always happen like that. So we have to take these little micro steps. And so wherever you're at right now, when you're watching this, that's where you are. And that's so what we, whatever you're receiving, that's what you're going to get. You know, that's level up just in little moments. I love this so much. And so when we, when we dive in and soul shine, we'll go into those, those pattern beliefs. We'll be able to go in a little bit further to rearrange them to shift them so they aren't holding you in the same frequency so your body the rhythm of your soul your soul has a rhythm right it it vibrates it sends a frequency out that sends a signal out from your body into your aura this is why you guys see color around people a lot of you see color you see vibration you feel energy you'll walk up you'll walk by someone and you'll be like wow they feel like really dark or there's a guy they've got a lot of problem Uh, why do I see blue around someone? Why do I see brown someone? Um, I got a phone call yesterday. Like I was seeing vibrant purple around someone. What does that mean? Literally our, our ability to see the color and see the energy can tell a story of what they have going on. You can tell your own frequency by tapping in and feeling on your body, right? You can hold yourself and start asking, am I, am I being 
unworthy. Is this an unworthy pattern? And you can feel the frequency of your body. You can feel the energy that you're putting out when you are feeling that way. So when I start to give my energy away into the lower frequency of I've done something wrong, I've hurt them, whatever, you know, I'm punishing myself, that feels very very young, very little, very insecure. And it doesn't feel like the empowered being that I am. So I've just jumped a timeline. I've left the, this entrance, this space. I've gone into an old paradigm. I've gone into my soul fragment of the little girl who was being punished and whatever. I've gone into that energy and I have to come on back. And so I was just feeling it, just feeling and holding space like, okay, you're feeling it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to change that. So if you can picture your body is, is like a body of water, right? You're an ocean, you are this really beautiful ocean. And depending on how deep your pain is seated within your physical body, it's going to change the color and the waves of that ocean. So I'll work with, I love when, when my angels bring me around someone, they'll be like, okay, so they've got really dark, deep water in big waves. Those deep, dark, you know, that deep, dark water tells me very deep emotions. They're really holding old patterning. And when I see big waves, then I know that they're sending out that signal. They're sending out like huge stormy energy and they're not settled in their body. When we are at peace within, when we have peace within, the water is going to be calm. The water is going to be a brilliant color. It's going to be like something so yummy for us, similar to our core colors. It's just going to be really brilliant. And it's going to be gentle moving. You're going to see, you know, nice flowing energy. That's going to be really the beautiful view. But when we have a lot of chaos and we have a lot of storms and we have a lot of like upheavals of sea, well, that's the energy that we're putting out. And so manifesting, like bringing in your, your beautiful heart's desires comes from having a calm centered space and that rhythm really beautiful that moves with your soul it's just like effortless right it's like oh gentle right and we can't force it and you can't fake it like you have to be in your body to be able to do it and being in the body and being your soul's with them and listening to the wisdom of your soul is tapping into your senses and that's the thing that I want to do today with you. I want to tap into your senses because your senses are your gift. Your senses are your storyline. It's how you'll commune with spirit. Grateful, thankful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh my gosh, you guys are so much fun. All right, so what are we going to do now? We are going to do a little meditation for you. That I'm going to bring you into your core color again. And then we're going to tap into your postcard vision, the one that's been coming for you. And that's what we're going to start to bring some light into. So you, you get into the wisdom of your soul's truth and you can lean into like, yes, there's possibility. And that's what we're going to really stay with today, possibility. So well, I'm going to have you guys start to get in a comfortable position wherever you are, as long as you're not driving, if you're driving, pull on over. And if you can, if you're not in a public place, come into a centered place, preferably with your spine straight. Allow yourself to close your eyes and come into your body. And I just want you to follow the rhythm of your breath. The rhythm of your breath is so beautiful. This is life force energy. Renewing your, your body, filling your body with that beautiful oxygen. And for those of you that struggle with quieting your mind, just follow the breath and add a count to it. That will help you to stay out of the thoughts and just stay in this moment. And if you were with me yesterday, I'm just gonna have you just start connecting with your core color. So I'm gonna bring you into your heart center, allowing that internal eyesight to fall right into the heart. Let's just start to connect with this beautiful color, a color of your choice, a color that's been with you your whole life, a color that just appears. Just noticing and being with that color. And just see if you can invite your breath to start merging with your color. The seed of your soul starts to expand and illuminate as God love starts to pour in through the crown of your head. Source energy brings vitality nourishment 
and fulfillment. Allowing that core color to fill your entire being with every inhale and with every exhale, just noticing that color becoming bright and shimmery as it begins surrounding your entire body. And that shimmery energy lets you know that you're connected to God, to source energy, to your higher power. And once you have from head to toe this beautiful orb around you, I'm going to invite you to allow your bubble to grow a little bigger. Notice with your eyes, your internal eyesight, how this energy of your core color, this bubble begins to move. Feel the rhythm, the flow. Feel your skin and your body. Maybe you start moving, letting go. Notice in your body what you know. What you see, what you hear, what you smell, what you taste, what you feel, and what you know. Now come back into your heart center. We're going to come into a memory, a postcard vision, a vision that you had something that you were doing in this life and you saw it as a picture. Something that hasn't come to fruition yet. I want you just to hold space right here and now for that to come to you. Maybe it's a remembrance and maybe it's something new. Go ahead and place your hand, your right hand or your left hand over your heart center, feeling your heart rise and your belly fall. Feel the energy of this postcard, this vision of you. Allowing it to start to move and groove in the rhythm of your soul, of your truth, of your body. Feel it inside of your body as if it's already come to be. It's already come to be. What do you see? What do you smell? What do you hear? What do you taste? What do you feel? What do you know? Hold space right here. And if you have pen and paper right here, if you're able to Take a moment to write down what's coming to you. Through the view of your senses, through the tone. Notice what's happening to your core color as you're accepting this postcard vision in. Notice how your body feels. What is your energy doing here? What is that postcard vision? How do you feel? Yeah, beautiful, peaceful. Mm. It's very yummy. It's very sweet. Sunrise, I'll be okay. Amen, girl, you will be okay. So your feelings, when you're in this, when you're in your postcard vision, mm, see this is possibility. And this is the rhythm of your soul. This is your truth. This is the wisdom of your soul. The thing that we crave all the time. 
So I invite you to return anytime into that core color meditation, just to get into your own rhythm, to be in that beauty and that expansiveness of who you are, to release the things that you've picked up that you think you want, and to come back into the truth and those visions that God has placed before you, the things that he's showing you and guiding you to, the things that are awaiting you just because He's asking you to have faith, to come back into this hope, to come back into the promise. You were never meant to come and just suffer and be in lack. And things that we affirm our lack with are, well, if God wanted it for me, he'd give it to me. Now you're just affirming your own pain. You're just affirming your own pain. You're affirming your own suffering. You're allowing that to continue and rule who you are. Mm. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. So we're going to invite you again to join us in Soul Shine. We meet twice a month. And we will uncover all the yumminess of your soul. Guaranteed the angels will hold nothing back. God will show up in the community, in the people, in the beautiful women that are present to hold sacred space for you so that you can feel what you need to feel, to heal what you need to heal, to rise into your own occasion with support, with love. Beautiful. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining Sophia and me and God and the angels and coming into this presence of the rhythm of your soul, the truth of who you are. I do hope this serves you where you are today and reminds you of how special you are. You are loved. Thank you. Thank you, Jeannie. And I look forward to seeing all of the new members in Soul Shine. I'm excited. Yeah, me too. All right, beautifuls. Have a beautiful, beautiful day. God bless you. Thank you.